Welcome everyone, it is amazing to see there are 70 women from around the world who can't make this conference who have come to listen to Daniela talking about trans minors, gestational carriers, sex workers, biohazard humans. It's uh, going to be quite an amazing speech so um, I'll hand over to Daniela now. My name is uh, Daniela Danna and I come from Italy. I could uh, advance my thoughts uh, about this uh, uh, by listening to the, all the, um, the writers uh, uh, in English and in other languages that have uh, been analyzing uh, the, the question, uh, uh, the questions that uh, we are facing now. And I'm putting together a few things that I call in Italian the gender package because, uh, not because, uh, for example, sex workers, uh, the, so-called sex workers should be um, necessarily a part of this uh, gender package, but because it has been, uh, um, um, the envelope is, is the same one, and uh, I used to belong to the lesbian and lesbian and gay movement, I wasn't a separatist, um, and uh, now I've seen that from the gay and lesbian movement since uh, about 20 years now, uh, a new, um, label has been put on, which is LGBT plus, and the goals of this movement, of this movement is uh, the gender package now, in Italy as well, as in, in all other countries, and I know from the research of Jennifer Bielek uh, that this is not by chance, this is uh, something that has been um, prepared, fostered, and, uh, and also um, financed. Uh, but it's, uh, it's uh, the, the gender package is uh, getting to be mainstream in Italy as well. And what I, uh, in my research work, uh, can I, what can I contribute to the analysis? Uh, I think it's uh, what these uh, new subjects have in common, <clears throat> which is uh, um, a, a veneer of uh, liberation that, uh, uh, trans minors, uh, sex workers, uh, and uh, uh, gestational carriers uh, are expressing. They are apparently uh, in the first person, they are uh, uh, subjects that are uh, vindicating rights. Mm, and what all these subjects have in common is that they are diminished subjects. They are somehow uh, mutilated in their rights. So they are in, a, in the very concept that is constituting them and in which some people are recognizing themselves, but uh, the movement is not made by these people, uh, uh, mainly it's made by uh, the, the generality, the goodwill people, uh, the uh, leftist people that want to help others, so they want to help these new subjects. And then if we look uh, at what are the, the consequences of recognizing these subjects, we see that uh, giving so-called rights, uh, recognition to these uh, new subjects is taking away uh, what they already have as uh, citizens, uh, as, uh, as um, women and men, as um, boys and girls, because a sex worker is somebody who has already in the very concept of being a sex worker has, all, has already renounced to her sexual freedom. She is by constitution uh, open to um, having intimate relationships for money with anybody. And then there is the question of choice, but she's not really, really uh, uh, renouncing it all because she can negotiate, she can refuse some uh, customers uh, or clients, Johns or whatever you want to call them. And this is not really correct because uh, uh, this is uh, uh, something that the market is, uh, is deciding. If uh, there are a few people that uh, are uh, forced by the life, their life circumstances to accept to be a prostitute or sex worker, then uh, it is a market. And then you can, uh, you can refuse uh, all the clients that you, that you want to refuse. You cannot refuse to do certain acts if, uh, if the market is against you. This is what we have been seeing in Germany and, uh, and also in the Netherlands in the last 20 years. I want it to be very short, so I'm, I'm jumping from uh, uh, one subject to another, and uh, if you have questions, then I will, uh, I will look, uh, and uh, of course, there's somebody in the, in the audience that I'm very grateful for. Uh, 
that uh, um, can uh, also pose questions. So the second uh, are the trans minors, and the trans minors are um, have already renounced their uh, bodily integrity. In uh, the very concept, uh, constitutionally, uh, what is a trans minor is somebody who's happy in uh, changing. And uh, this is also something that uh, other people have pointed out, that in order to be themselves, they have to change completely. They have to put themselves in the hands of the of, um, of uh, uh, doctors, uh, of endocrinologists, and uh, whatever. And so they are, um, their freedom is constrained by having to go to a, through a certain path with the promise of uh, uh, finding happiness or finding uh, um, themselves uh, in a, which, which is uh, just a promise and comes from outside while uh, there is no uh, reflection at all on what should come from inside. They are being validated only as, uh, as long as they um, commit themselves to go through this path of uh, transition changing, even though this is something that I um, I really regret to point out because uh, as, as uh, my experience as a part of the Italian gay lesbian movement, we all always had the trans people, transsexuals, not the transgenders. And, uh, and we have done our best to accept them and to, to foster their, their social position because as adults, they, they found that they, uh, um, they, they had this, uh, this desire of changing uh, their body. But uh, uh, this is what I regret to say that you cannot really change your sex. It's a social arrangement that we are recognizing certain people to be of, uh, of the sex they are not born into. So that's why it's a, uh, uh, it's really problematic to, to uh, say to minors, okay, this is a good path for you, we are affirming you, and uh, then you can uh, be uh, yourself by, by doing something to your body that uh, it should not be, um, be allowed to uh, decide for people who are so um, undeveloped also in their, in their thinking. Anyway, um, this is a, 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 co um, a subject that he is apparently uh, asking for rights that are uh, the, 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 the rights not to be themselves. It's uh, really the opposite uh, because you cannot, um, you cannot decide at such an early age uh, uh, being a minor to uh, make these changes to your body. So the, the third subject uh, is the so-called gestational carrier. Um, surrogacy is uh, uh, is something that it is really um, slipping away when we are thinking about it. Because uh, uh, is it something that uh, people do um, with uh, donated, so-called, uh, or bought uh, um, eggs, so they are not related? Uh, and we have also some courts who have. Uh, um, stated that uh, if somebody, if a woman is gestating, uh, giving birth, uh, but the egg was not hers, then she's not the biological mother. And I'm wondering what sense biological is used because, of course, uh, pregnancy is a very big uh, um, biological fact. Uh, so um, these, uh, in my exploration of surrogacy, I've come to the conclusion that uh, in, uh, essentially it is a, a, a juridical institution. It's not uh, um, a pact among people. It's not something that necessarily needs uh, um, medical staff. Um, it is something that is, uh, um, it can be introduced by law. The law has to say that uh, if a woman is pregnant, then um, it might be for somebody else. So the law is introducing a kind of uh, fantasy, making it real, because law is uh, uh, the word of the law um, is performative, makes something happen, saying this woman has, uh, has been pregnant, she has given birth, but she's not the mother of uh, the, um, the newborn. And only the law can say this. And this is what uh, people want uh, surrogacy introduced in a country is uh, the neoliberal part that used to be the leftist part. We have a party called 
um, the Democratic Party, is in the States, uh, and it comes from the old Communist Party, uh, which is uh, quite surprising, uh, as a change. And they are now, uh, currently they are, um, they want uh, the newborns to get registered with the two fathers, because of course we know that 90% uh, or even more of uh, surrogacy deals have been done in favor of uh, heterosexual couples, but the ones in Italy, as I think anywhere, who are uh, pushing for it, politically uh, taking it as a goal, are um, the uh, rainbow families in Italy, they are the, um, uh, the uh, uh, mother and father who are uh, lesbian and gays and are organized and are hegemonized by the gay fathers who had gone abroad from Italy and came back with a, with a boat um, a newborn. And as uh, uh, the, they paid the mother not to uh, recognize the kid. And this is, a, I, I did some, um, some change in my, in my analysis because at first, and there's an English book that's called Contract the Children about this. And I was considering also the, um, the possibility that you could voluntarily give up the child in favor of the natural father. Uh, so there was kind of a compromise within the gay lesbian movement to say, okay, but we can we can agree maybe to do this on a on a really voluntary basis, without the law having to change. Um, the principle of the law uh, from the Roman times is a mater semper certa. The mother is always uh, certain because it's, she's the one who gives birth, and the father, in my opinion. He's the father, if he's married to the mother. Pater est quem nuptia demonstra. So um, to make this uh, overhaul of, uh, of uh, the uh, civil law concerning uh, um, descendancy is to deprive women of uh, a right in certain cases. Uh, if I give birth to somebody in Italy, then I'm the mother, unless I say I don't want to be. The mother, and then I, uh, my, my name is recorded anyway because uh, now nowadays the laws have changed. You cannot be anonymous anymore. You you must be open to later contact, to which of course, being a relationship, you are not forced to respond, but uh, you must be um, the the kid must be able to find you somehow and ask you for having a relationship, and if not. Uh, then uh, too bad. Anyway, uh, so the, the women have uh, the full right to either recognize the child or not. And with this uh, gestational carrier subject who's asking for uh, rights, so-called, she's uh, uh, it's embedded in this figure, the fact that she has to give up the, the kid. And here in Britain, uh, up to, uh, a few years ago, um, around 2016, uh, there was a, um, there were some official documents uh, uh, discussing surrogacy that has been on a on a, um, a descending plane uh, on a slippery slope uh, since uh, 1985, when uh, the first first law was approved that a woman could decide whether it was uh, her pregnancy or not, but she could still be able to recognize the kid in, uh, um, after giving birth. And now they are discussing this and uh, um, um, contemplating the possibility of uh, taking away the right uh, from the gestational carrier to recognize her kid. And, the, um, and then you see all these uh, surrogates who are, don't want to be called surrogates mothers. Uh, they are gestational carriers, they're just carriers. And they say, we don't want this, uh, this right because we are professionals, because this is what we are, uh, we are meant to do. So uh, the subjects that uh, Michel Foucault, um, if we want to take reference to him, has uh, uh, shown that uh, is uh, partly at least uh, um, uh, shaped by power. When there is this uh, relationship, then uh, uh, some subjects uh, for many reasons uh, for uh, self-sacrificing to um, in order to uh, 
uh, incarnate the, uh, the women's mission to serve others, they're saying we don't want to, to be able to recognize the kid because this is not something that uh, uh, it will upset the, uh, the intended parents. We will never do something like that. And then, of course, they're also uh, renouncing this right uh, beforehand, before even uh, getting pregnant. So in nine months, lots of things can happen, of course. And again, um, the, the argument is that uh, in favor of introducing surrogacy is that uh, women want to do it, women are generous, women uh, can, um, can help other people and uh, they, they want, but uh, then you, you are creating a market and the market is uh, telling how much these women will be paid, what their uh, duties will be, it's not something, as in the case of the sex worker, is the same, no? And the sex worker, um, the, move, the, the movement for the recognition of uh, the sex worker says that uh, um, she's gonna be uh, uh, in the command, she's gonna be able to uh, decide which clients and so on. And the same is said of the gestational carrier. But when, once you have created the market, then you, you cannot ask more from the market uh, than uh, what uh, the, um, the class uh, positions, uh, the circum personal circumstances uh, can allow you to do. And then I want to uh, talk um, also about uh, the fourth uh, figure that is uh, already taught as a subject, but with uh, diminished uh, rights and diminished uh, faculties. It's what I call a uh, following uh, Agamben and following uh, Jan uh, Davis, uh, who's a British journalist uh, who's written pseudo pandemics, uh, which I uh, strongly recommend uh, uh, to understand uh, the times we are living in. Because my first uh, three subjects were um, were just uh, peculiar to our situation as women and the sex based rights, uh, what is, uh, you know, uh, the uh, what are the reasons to overcome that, those? But uh, in the case of the biohazard uh, subject, no more citizen, uh, this is something that is concerning the whole of uh, uh, the working class in, uh, in, in even the middle classes uh, in humanity, uh, because we have been uh, transformed in uh, the last three years from citizens with uh, certain rights, the right to assembly, the right to decide by ourselves what our health uh, will be, you know? what, uh, what are the protections that, are, uh, that we want to take. And that was uh, the main uh, rhetorical trick that everybody has been uh, made responsible for the health of others. And then it means that we are all considering ourselves as biohazards. I'm dangerous to everybody. I, I was speaking with people, uh, there was a woman uh, with a mask and I was you know, in the open and I was asking her, why are you wearing it? I said, oh, I don't know, I might be contagious. I said, I'm ill, I don't know. These are all uh, faculties, uh, things, uh, powers that have been taken away from us, that have been taken away from us and uh, uh, the state, uh, which, uh, Agamben, uh, Davis, and others are calling the biosecurity state. It's not the neoliberal state anymore that has, uh, was uh, thinking of uh, the three previous subjects as uh, uh, somebody exercising a choice, a choice to change sex, a choice to become a sex worker, a choice to become a gestational carrier. Now we don't have the choice anymore. The neoliberal state was gone and now it's come back and I don't know, I hope uh, for good, but uh, because we always have to uh, to regret every new transformation. Uh, new transformation is for the worse. But in the last uh, uh, couple of years, of the, the last three years, we have been considered, and we are we have been trained to consider ourselves as biohazards, somebody who needs to be distanced by everything in uh, for fear of uh, uh, infecting others, and. Uh, uh, so we are subjects that have renounced the uh, bodily integrity um, against uh, a um, forced sanitary treatment. We have renounced our right to assembly, to protest, to 
could do politics uh, um, for a new idea of the human being as somebody who's uh, um, who is uh, uh, who needs to be taken care of. And our constitutional court has, has even uh, um, um, has even approved of the. Uh, the obligation that we had in Italy, if you wanted to have a job and you were over 50, or you needed to get the, 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 the jet. Uh, 